The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. On this Wednesday, the 7th of June, we're looking at the Dow up 15 points at 33,588. I think that this is a really important moment for the Dow. I mean, a moment, not in a particular minute, but this particular phase right now after that big move from 32,586 to 33,805 going to a peak B had almost a round number 33,805.00 round number at that last peak. So that, that's the one to, to take out. Most importantly, what I am looking at here is, look at this rectangle formation. You remember, I like to look at chart patterns that repeat over and over and over. And when I draw in a rectangle, in this particular case, no, it's not really a rectangle. In fact, let me just take it away for a moment. Let me click on it right there. Just move it around. The trade station just has a really nice uh, technical tools that you can use, which is what I use. I'm very visual, so this this is important to me. So within this context, I've taken this candle of the week of the 16th of December, taken the high in the 14,700 area, and then the low of 12,600, so about a thousand points, and I've treated that as really important because when we made the arch formation. From the 28,660 low of October, and we are still long from that October low. And one of the the reasoning that I've had for just a really long time now is that every rally, if we can keep going towards the 34,000 area, every time we get really bad news, and I suspect the Fed news coming up is not going, the market's not going to like it too much when it gets to the end of is it next week? I'm not sure even when it is, but. We can pull back, but each time we pull back, yes, we made a lower low in that, that spiral down to the March low of uh, 31,429. But look at that arch. Now, so the body of trading is in this rectangle. So let me put the rectangle back so you can see why I have it. Yes, it looks messy. It's got a bunch of things. But look, I can get rid of that now because that's not important. That's Chapman Wave inside wedge target re repellent line. I can even just for the moment, I'm going to get rid of the left side, right side price time match, because that's now a little bit, there's, there's a little bit of an imbalance. But what's really important is, look, in my methodology, I have a technique that I call the inside track repellent or propellant zone. And what it says is when you can join two peaks, and I, I use the wick high most of the time, just the wick high is really important. I can go to the body, but mostly I try to go for the wicks. And then I draw a little, a tiny little narrow trading, um, uh, little channel right there i'm always i'm not sure six two, maybe an eighth three sixteenths it's just a tiny little channel when the price gets into that channel it so often gets repelled and that says and i'm not sure it's going to do that in this particular move we'll see days young weeks young month is even very young but what i want to see is the dow start to take out this peak c of thirty four thousand two hundred fifty seven to go to a leg D, and that'll take it above the inside track repellent zone. I'm spending just a little time on this now because it's so important. Uh, it's important looking out. It's not important today. Uh, I think today is a little bit of a struggle with the market. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, that's why I've got the rectangle there. So the main body of performance is over the low that was made. Uh, back in the twenty, week of the twenty third of December, thirty two thousand five seventy. That's all I'm doing. So, with that said, you can see how it's struggling. It's already three three days, and it hasn't gone to leg C, about thirty three thousand eight oh five. All right, let's get out of this. It's a main main thing is the key support is around thirty three thousand three hundred, thirty three thousand two hundred. The S and P, different chart pattern. Look at this. It's making higher highs and higher lows, and it's just gone. I'm calling this, I have no choice but to call this a leg F right now. It can go to a G, there's never an H. But there's also the, ch <laughs> I love this in a the market, there's always a, an if this and if that. It's almost like an economist saying, but on the one hand and on the other hand. But this is a chap wave instant restart. It's a whopper of, a, of an instant restart because with three bars, it went sharply lower. It, it 
it went right to the Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone and then whacked right through the inside track repellent zone, which is now support in the 43, whoops, in the 42, uh, I, I'll call it 58 to 68 area. And here we are, 4292. So this could become F slash B. We'll see about that. I want to just go one step at a time. The weekly chart, you can see the same sort of thing. We're going towards the left side high of 4325.28 made, and I always should put in when it was. I think it was August. So well, now what we're looking at is <clears throat> very good action. Even the weekly chart has the potential for a chapter wave instant restart. I just circle it and let the prices go where they're going to go. That's all there is to it. I don't have to tell the market where it's going to go. Just for some reason, I think it won't be listening. Look how nicely it's gone above the inside track pro repellent zone in the monthly chart. But that's a sideways move, slightly high, slightly lower lows. And I, I want to see this leg C continue uh, nicely higher all the way through June. And I think that's going to be really tough. All right, look at the IWM. Lousy, 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 then whoosh. If you look at the monthly chart, uh, nothing to see. Uh, this is a big rectangle. Well, the big rectangle can take all the way back to 200. We're at 187 right now. Look at this weekly chart. It's gone peak A. This is now leg B. A leg is a leg. It's a floating ladder until it makes a peak. And we had a peak B that pulled back previously back in uh, February. Yeah, February, the week of the 3rd. At 199.26, this is a stupendous move. And even here on the daily, we could be having a Chapman Wave instant restart. I, I got a feeling these restarts are just going to continue with letters sequentially higher, and then we'll see what happens. But in the Dow, uh, that we haven't even started leg C. It could fail, yeah, but we'll we'll see what happens. Meantime, back at the ranch, I'll just quickly do the SMHs. I don't want to hit the break before I finish this. Nice bounce today. Uh, up to 66 at 147, 8, 148, and above, below the 151.71 high. Um, look at the weekly chart. Everything there is still positive. When I say I think they're going to move higher in a, a slower uh, upside move than, uh, the, say, the laggard sectors like the XLF which is the S&P Select Financial, pulling back a little bit from a very, very sharp move yesterday. Uh, down 10 cents at 32.94. The KRE, which is the regional bank uh, ETF, has a target for me of 44. Did I type that in? No, I, I forgot to type it in on this one. 44.59 as the first big resistance area, left side, right side price time match going into a couple of weeks' time, in fact. So this is still, uh, sorry, a couple of days' time. This is still early and it's up. 98 cents at 44.15. We went long uh, on, uh, was that yesterday or the day before? Yeah, we are long anyway. We've been long a couple of times. And uh, now uh, what we're looking at is this weekly 14 period moving average at 44.18. That's going to be the big issue. How does it kind of close above it? It hasn't closed, I mean closed, above it since this little candle right here. The week of the February at 64. Well, 20 points higher and higher. Unbelievable. What a smash. S&P Regional Banking ETF. So I'm suspecting we've got a little roughness coming up here. I've got the uh, little chart here of the uh, one minute and a peak F in the 10 minute. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's up 13, S&P's up 6. Basil Chapman. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, so a question about GSM, which is Ferro Globe PLC Specialty Metals. Oh, let me just get rid of this here. And I can see Tiger YouTube. Any questions that come in there? Um, yeah, okay. So w look at this as a time sequence. I, I hadn't done this before, but I'll do it right now. It's trading, GSM is trading at, uh, up 8 cents at 5.13. So if I go to the left side high, and I just go to the mid, not the midpoint, but the certain candles that I like to look at here as showing either indecision or it's a peak or a trough that looks visually important. This is the reason why I had such a terrible time when I wanted to do this particular measurement um, as an objective analysis that is computer uh, programming related. It's it, it's tough. I have a couple of things, just a couple that are just purely visual that I do have a methodology, but it's a, uh, it's a methodology that has human choices, not robotic. In other words, I can't, I couldn't say specifically that if this happens and then use this part B as your, your template, because in whenever I've had this done, the, the computer takes part B and turns it into part A. It makes it so important. I'm just saying, hey, you know, let me just count it this way. And that's the most common sense way to do it because it's a visual thing that I'm looking at. It doesn't work that way when you're programming. You've got to be so specific, which is fantastic because when you're so specific, when you meet all those criteria, You've got no thinking to do. You've done your thinking. You've done your planning. In this particular instance, there's a lot of thinking, which means that you've got the human error that, that is possible. You've got to account for that. So what I do is I choose, in this particular, I've chosen this particular candle right here, this tiny little doji candle. I've used it as a left side, right side price time match. That's the symmetry to the high that was made at peak B minus because it failed on the 3rd of uh, March at 5.47. Let me just type in 547 just to show you what I'm doing. I'm going to do the same thing now. I'll choose some kind of a uh, um, commodity because I had a question about that. And I said I'll do some work on that. And then I went to a low of $3.95 on, uh, on the 4th of May. Three ninety-five. There we go, 3.95. So what I'm looking at is in this particular methodology, the Chapman inside 
wedge repellent line was hit today exactly right there, the little dashed green line. And I take it from a specific left side uh, um, bar. <clears throat> and in this particular instance, what we're looking at is it goes all the way to the exact left side, right side price time match of the 19th. The 19th will be about a Monday a week, I think it is. Monday, we're talking about June, right? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Monday a week. Oh, that's a long time. But anyway, it says by Monday a week, we're trading with a high today of 527. You only have 20 points, to, 20 cents to go. Um, but anyway, it's a leg C, and it says that that's your resistance line. When it starts to trade above it, you're going to be able to get there quicker and quicker. But by the 19th, you should be testing 547. You're in leg C. There should be a pullback and then a leg D. Now, this is the other thing. Look, the MACD is deflected high in the M-shaped pattern with the price going much higher. That means that buying is coming in uh, very intensively. This is we're looking at GSM, Ferro Globe, PLC, specialty metals. But what's really important is the stochastics only at 67. The unbalanced volume is really weak. But look at the nine. Even on that pullback, the nine did not flip uh, into the pink negative territory. It stayed green. That's usually a big positive. It says you've got you've still got upside momentum. Upside momentum means that there's a chance you could get your D, but you might be slowing the upside at this particular point. But <clears throat> The stochastic says, wait a minute, uh, if the stochastic says 67 and you love 80%, isn't that really bullish? Well, the answer is yes. And on the on-balance volume, is still so weak, it should go much higher. Every other high, it was running sharply. It isn't yet. Isn't that bullish for it to go high? The, the answer is, I'm using two indicators here to say things are really good. One is the, the, the green 9 pre moving average is way above the 14. That's good. The other is the MACD is deflected back up again. That's good. So all I can say is I have a divergence here, and this divergence says that we could be making a leg D soon, and then you're going to get quite a sharp pullback because every time you've made these peaks and turned around, that turnaround has been quite vicious. That's my warning. So the price is acting well, but I think I'm starting to see a divergence that could say – uh, we're getting to another one of those areas where you can get a sharp pullback. And look at the weekly. It's stuck. It's got this cup formation, but it's really stuck in a lower rectangle formation below the high that was made in that ugly candle from back in somewhere in November in the, in the 640s. So all I can say is I'm putting in this as a rectangle here. And it just says MACD is good. Stochastic is not great. And the 9 p moving average has moved over the 14, and that's giving you strength. But uh, the 540s should offer you a lot of resistance. Okay, <laughs> I hope I did that. Now, next thing I want you to do is uh, just to run through the gold. It's just static right now. Silver, static uh, uh, yesterday, and today it's running a little bit. It's actually gone to a leg. I think that's a leg uh, C. Uh, it's 30, 20, 30, yeah, 2351, 2351. Yeah, this is a leg B. So this has gone to a leg B with the technical starting to improve a little bit. The nine has not crossed positive yet. And all I can say is that uh, silver and gold move in the same trajectories, but they have very often have very different price patterns. And within that context, what I am looking at here is that the weekly chart of silver says, yeah, it's had a consolidation. This consolidation could continue a while longer, probably with 24 30 as, as resistance on the upside. Today's high is 24.16, so maybe a little higher, 24.40 maybe, but key support of the 23.24, 200 period exponential moving average. I'll do high grade copper quickly. Nice move up, up 0 0.01, 3.78 uh, is the price. Most importantly, is it's the weekly chart says, yeah, it did get to that support level, Chapman Wave inside track support level. It is rallying off that, but it's not a very strong rally. I want you to go to crude oil. Crude oil, there's the pattern that we were looking at. I said, stuck in a rectangle formation when everyone was getting really bullish. I said, you might be right, but my chart doesn't say that. The way I'm reading the chart says, we're stuck in a range. We're making the lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m. It did fail, but it didn't break below the uh, 63, uh, low that was 63's area that was made in crude oil on the continuous contract back in early May. Uh, so it really is stuck in the channel. And you can see that in the weekly as well. 
uh, if it starts to trade near the 76 uh, area, then the 78, 23, 200 period moving average might become a, a target. I think it's it's kind of tough to do. Okay, with that said, I've got another. Oh, I said I'd do some. Let me do this. Um, so this is the TLT. As I said, stuck in a range. Look, lowercase h goes to a lowercase m. We've seen these patterns before. It says that the yields are stuck in a range, moving slightly higher. But until the 98 support area is taken out, I think it'll just stay in this range for a little while longer. And now I want to show you wheat. So I had a question about um, using techniques, different techniques in the uh, commodities in the, in the range, etc. And all I can say is that I use this Chapway methodology and it seems to do the, the, do the job, but I don't trade these commodities. So I, it's a little difficult for me to talk about it other than on a purely uh, prismatic level. I'll be back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFA. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Before we get to the uh, commodities, uh, let me show you Hummel. Uh, Hummel. Uh, Humana, Inc. Uh, Hummel was a very famous composer, a wonderful composer. Hummel and Beethoven used to have Piano, uh, piano hours. I don't know what you call it. You know, when you you, you have these competitions, uh, like saxophone players, they have these 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 combatants uh, where they play outplay one another. So Hummel and uh, Beethoven used to have these piano. One would have a tune, and the other would improvise, etc. Anyway, that's not that's H U M. It's Humana Inc. in the stock market. So it's kind of stuck right now. 
uh, you can see in the monthly chart, made a peak D. I have only a plus sign. I don't have a down arrow because the 9 is still way over the 14. That's good. And I think it's just stuck in range. It looks like bonds just stuck in range going sideways here. So 505.21 uh, uh, down 591. You can see the weekly chart. I have the two fighting patterns, the cup formation and the rectangle uh, and the arch formation. All you've got really is a rectangle. It's just stuck in the range. And that makes this uh, support so an entry point. I would hold off. Uh, even if it bounces, I think that 200 period moving average of 501 is such a magnet, it'll keep coming back there. So the, the best thing I could say is looking out, the lower range says if you can get the lower range below 500, preferably in the in the 490s, with the, with the, I'd still have a stop of 5% or 10% or something, yeah, 500, $500 stock, I'd have at least a $7 stop, okay? If you want to get it in that range, one quick dip underneath and says at about 4, right here, 497, I even put a stop at 492, the low that was made on the 30th, because when it gets to the low range, it, it attempts to go to the upper range. But this time it only went half, uh, just a little more than halfway above. So that makes me a little nervous. I personally, I would hold off. So if the question is looking for a good entry point, a good entry point, I would still treat as a, a split. I'd even have it as a three-way split. I'd have one that I'm getting in this lower range, uh, in the in the 500 to 497 area, and then I'd, I'd, I'd have to let that play out. And if it plays out because you've got it and it actually is moving high and it goes to 513, then I'd say, okay, maybe if you want to add because it looks like it wants to go to the upper range of 523, but at this particular point, I'm not even ready for that first tiptoeing in. I think it's, it's just this uppercase A. This is a pattern that can turn out to be really bullish I'd rather see how it holds the 501, 200 period moving average level. And then let's look at it, at it again, maybe today's Wednesday, maybe Friday, something like that. Uh, and that would be your first entry point. And when I say this pattern can be bullish, you make an arch formation and then a successful lowercase m. And then it rallies. If there is a close above the high that was made on the 5th of 527.65, 527. 528s. If there's a close in the uh, close in the 528s, that's going to be a really positive and say, hey, now you can go towards that 531, 33 area. All right. With that said, uh, I wanted to just show you this. So just in terms of the commodity, commodity, let's go to wheat. Uh, actually, you know what? I had this yesterday. I wonder if I've still got it. It was a 10-minute chart. Okay. So you can see what I've done here. I, I'll do this just briefly because I've got it in front of me. Look at the way the E-mini is making lower highs and lower lows. <clears throat> now, um, I'm a little upset because I did. I actually took, I took a short I took, uh, uh, right, right over there, I think it was. Is it over there? Yeah, over there. Over there. And then what happened was I made this, the stop just a, a tad too tight and it got stopped out. And I just, I've been busy, so I haven't been able to get back in. Um, and now look at it. It's doing what I wanted. i drawn in the arch formation. I did this Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line. And well, you remember I said, see if you can keep trend lines going because it's a remarkable thing how a trend line can suddenly wake up after being dormant for a while. Well, look at this. This was the target line. It almost hit it three times already. And now what we've got is it's going all the way down to the 4284 level and we're at 4288. I don't know if that's going to work, but what I have in the 10 minute chart is a peak F. <clears throat> and I didn't have any alternate count. I kept it as an F because it looked to me like the MACD was good enough to keep everything alphabetically going until we got to that long legged doji candle. And it did, there didn't seem to be an alternate count. And F was it. So we've made a, a sell signal in the 10-minute chart. So let me just do this because I think I did it yesterday. I wonder if it's still active. Maybe, let me just open this up. This is gold. Ah, there it is. Yeah, I had done this yesterday. Here's your cup formation. There's the midpoint that I chose. It almost looks like the chart we were looking at, which was SGM or whatever that was uh, for Dan in the Den. 
Left side, right side, price time match. Look at that symmetry. Look at the beautiful cup formation. It's actually two cup formations. And then it goes sideways, pops to an E, and then breaks down. So uh, within that context, I'm just going to say, so the pattern works. Let me see if this has gone to a peak D. This is gold because we want you to look at commodities. So there's your, I can, this is easy. I can make, that's the lowest low bar, right? That's easy to do because historically when you look back, you're always right. A, B, C, and there's your D. And then there's this isolated Eiffel Tower move at 9 o'clock this morning where something must have been said. So you've got your peak D. You've got almost what, what would have looked like an arch formation with price symmetry right here. Going from there, we can, yeah, we can go to the midpoint. And I would put in left side, right side price symmetry. Look at that. Right there. Well, it, 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 that would have been perfect. That was the low, but it wasn't the low that would have been the target. But nice price. And anyway, it demonstrates it perfectly. And here's your Eiffel Tower. Straight up and straight down. Looks like an uppercase A. And because it didn't take out that beginning point right there, this becomes an E. It's almost like that F that we were looking at a moment ago. Here's your E, and that gets this inverted V-shaped pattern, a little, the little cuppy on top, because I've used up my, at peak D, I've already used up the up arrow, the down arrow. So this becomes a red inverted V. And... Um, now you come down sharply. So now let's just look at, uh, let's do wheat. Uh, don't type it there, type it over here. I'll do this live right now. So within the context of the long, narrow rectangle, uh, gee, should I do all that now? I'll, I'll just draw it in. I, I don't really want to do this right now. Uh, if, if it takes out, if it goes to um, a D, above the trend line, uh, then you, so this is peak A, peak A, peak B, peak C, C1, C2, there's your D. Okay, then it pulls back to halfway of the, of the rectangle formation and takes out the left side low. So all the techniques work. I, I want to get something where I can actually put notations in it. Uh, is this one? Yeah, okay. So let's just go to the most obvious low. So let's just say uh, it's 3 in the morning and you wake up and now you want to do your analysis, but you haven't been following it all night like a, like a Larry Pesavento <laughs> would do. Uh, a to B, right there. You're looking for a D, C. Oops, sorry. Is it a C? This is the with increments. I'll be right back. We'll do this notation during the break. Uh, The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. 
Educating Investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Directions Daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hello, I just I was looking for something. I didn't want you to do if I'm going to do something. I don't want to do it with all the caveats that come with something that you're looking at by saying, oh, but that's the alternative account. I want to do something as simple and straightforward as possible. So, so let me just show you something here. Um, I'm going to go to, if I can find one, where it's a little bit simple. Oh, so within the Chapman Wave technique, regardless of looking at the notation, is it peak A, is it peak B, what is it? It just doesn't matter sometimes. Look what's important. You see this 200 period moving average? Did I even care about the 200 period? Forget about the price. It doesn't matter what you're looking at, right? Look, it broke down from this 200 period moving average. It tried to rally. Tried. Look how the magnet of the 200 period moving average can keep you just trading in a sideways move in the sine wave rectangle formation forever. This is going back. <laughs> Look at this. This is going back. To, I, I, actually, this is 120, so I don't go back. I could go back further. I haven't got it. But going back to December of 20, of, of no, what, it's not December. It's April the 20, yeah, early April. Look, early April, that too, it couldn't get away from the 200 period moving average. It doesn't matter what it is. We're looking for. Um, peak D's, peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D of this doji candle pulls back. Peak A, peak B, peak C, that's a C, that's not higher, that's a C, and there's your D, and it pulls back. And it keeps coming back down, and then finally it pulls away. It can't do it, it just can't do it, and then it breaks down. It's got this arch formation with a lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m, blop. It pushes down and it pulls back. Doesn't matter what the price is. Doesn't matter what you're looking at here. And look what happens. Goes into a rectangle formation. Now, what you're seeing is that the 200 period moving averages has come down very sharply. The price is getting closer. But then all of a sudden it slides deep. I don't need the 200 period moving average now. I just, it's, I don't need it. But it's sitting there and it's saying, when I need it, watch what happens. Well, it finally gets close, and then it tags it. Well, now it's tagged it. Let's see how long it stays there. It stays there. It stays there. It stays. It stays. It's still there. So, the question is: In the Chamber of methodology, does it apply to commodities? It applies to anything that moves because it is using moving averages. It's using the price where, as long as it moves up and down, as long as there's an oscillation, you can do the Chamber of methodology. Does it always make D, E, or F an important? Yes, it does make it important. How you interpret it is going to be very important. Um, sometimes you get a long wait before you get that fine look. Here's your peak A, here's your peak B, here's your peak C, there's peak C1, C2. I would call that C3. I'd even say this is a C4. And then finally it retests it with a real test, almost the exact price, so there's your real C1, C2. It didn't make a D. Maybe it did by a penny. But it looks to me like it's... And look at the <clears throat> the technicals are holding much better on this rally. And this rally says, hey, maybe I can break out. But no, 
you're using the Chamber methodology, which says a rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patients. And if you take out the midpoint of the long rectangle, be careful because that could not only break the left, the, the base low of the rectangle, but it could go one to one to the downside. And then there's always, it's when the speed is so quick. It's like, oh, my God, I forgot to say goodbye to Harry. So it makes a quick attempt to get back to, to say goodbye, and that's the big test. And look what happens now. It makes a V-shaped pattern. All of a sudden, the 200-period moving average is your, is your resistance. So even regardless of notation, there are so many things that you can look at. Basil, can you look at the VIX index? Yes, we'll look at the VIX index. What I was looking at was the continuous uh, contract in soybeans. All right, doesn't matter. It didn't matter. I couldn't care. When people ask me to do it, sometimes it's so quick because I've only got the break in which to do it. I just look at the pattern. I do a notation. Then I look to say, oh, it's, and then I don't know what, the, what it is or the price or anything. I've already done the analysis. And then I can say, okay, oh, it's a $2 stock. Oh, it's a $2,000 stock. Or oh, it's a $200 stock. doesn't matter. All right. So uh, soybean acting very well right here. Look at that consolidation after two doji candles. This is a good. This is good because it's got the MACD improving, the stochastics improving. You got you went under eight ten percent in the stochastic. Now you're over. So this is a buy signal. Technically, I should say it's going very close to a buy mode because the MACD's already moved up. But I want that nine period to cross positive. I have to wait for that. And if it crosses positive in leg A, I say that's fine. Will it go to peak B, C, and D? I don't know. But all the technicals, the stochastic, if that happens, I'd like to see the stochastic to be upgraded to a buy, from a buy signal to a buy mode. I'd like the stochastic to be over 80%. So I thought I'd just do that just to say it doesn't really matter uh, what we're looking at. So can I look at the VIX index? Let's do that right now. Um, wow. So look at this chart here of the VIX index and the monthly chart. We were once in the 8s and the 9s and the 10s and the 11s. Look there, 10.28, 8.84 back in 2017, 8.856. I've always said the Chapman methodology in the, it doesn't work on the VIX index in the notation because it's an emotional beast. It doesn't just base it on, on other qualities. So it can fail at a peak A or a B or a C. In this case, China, U.S. rates back in 2015, August, it goes, screams up to 53.29, uh, China plus domestic issues, etc. And the higher yields is always the same thing. China, although China's been out of the news lately, coronavirus, peak C, and then it fails. Another interest rates, peak C right there. That was 85.47, March of 2020. Uh, you remember, we, we went long. Uh, in fact, we still long some things from there. So here we go. Uh, so it's it's failing. And what we're looking at here is this is an arch formation taking out the left side low. And the left side low is 14.10. But you remember, I don't like to use this Chapman methodology on the VIX index. I do the notations, etc. But what I do is I've got a very long term, this grayish, purplish, Dash, uh, there's a line, thick line at the back. That's just telling me where we've been at different times. And now for the first time, it looks, why well, we haven't closed the month. It's not even halfway through the month. But so far, we're underneath, sharply underneath. Look, the last low was at 14.10 back in June of 2021. We are now June of 2023, two years later, and we're 14.10, and the low so far is 14, it's 13.90. So we've gone under it. So that just says to me that there's buying pressure coming into the market. But over the last couple of years, I've, I've said my, my, the reason why for my chapter wave trend gauge, I don't actually give the price. It's the only thing in all my work that I don't make public is the numbers. Is because I think those numbers are going to change. Just as the VIX index for me used to be absolutely under 12 and then under 10 was very important. It all changed with COVID. So I don't, I, in this case, the numbers are changing, but it's interesting that we are back into areas that we haven't been for a long time. 
I'm also beginning to think we're becoming a little bit more vulnerable in the next week or two. I, the way I'm looking at this stochastic. So I'll be back in a moment. Dow's up 38, entries down six. Uh, Bell's a chap and take conditions hour. You right back. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, oh, folks. So look at that Eiffel Tower, the pink F in the, in the doji candle, a long-legged doji candle, the 10-minute chart. And look at this. And this is what I say. Keep your trend lines in place. Every once in a while, they just keep coming up. And here we are. We're always within 42.75 is the 42... 77 is the target of this particular trend line. Here we're at 42.81. Isn't that, uh, that's really something. So this is what I'm looking at here. Uh, the Dow is actually moving quite nicely higher. Um, ENPH, yes, it's filling the gap. Tomorrow I'm going to take time and I'll, I'll talk about gaps. I, I had it written down for today, but I'll put NPH in that in that in that area gaps. Good. Okay. So what we're looking at now is that the Dow is 
stronger. And that's what I've been saying. This rotational market is so important to have this rotational market. You've got the Dow a little bit stronger. It's up 49. But look at the S&P. The S&P has pulled back uh, to minus 8. It's still a new high high. I've got a leg F. This could be an alternate count. We don't know yet. And the QQQ pulling back as well, even deeper, down uh, almost 3. But it's been spectacular. Apple, let's see what Apple's doing. Apple's, ah, it's down 55 cents. So a couple of things going on. I would like today for the Dow to close higher. I don't care whether it's higher than the S&P. In other words, I'd actually like to have it close positive. Just to digest the faith. But it's really important is off the two o'clock, whatever the Fed does, whatever the is, uh, based on interest rates, it might be important just for the day. But I think that we still have enough momentum to be going higher. But I'm beginning to look at this and say, we're getting closer and closer to a leg that says this could be.